All right, hey everybody. Today we are finally talking about the work portion of the energy and work unit. So let's get into it. Uh, so work, I guess you can be defined as like you, well, let's just look at the definition that we'll talk about. The ability to transfer energy. So when you're doing work, like moving a box, you're putting a box into motion. So you're giving it kinetic energy. Or when you run up the stairs, you are giving yourself motion, kinetic energy, and potential energy. So it's the ability to transfer energy. And as we do more problems, it should make more sense. So it, with work, if the force acts in the same direction as the object's motion, then the work done is positive. So if you are pushing this box to the right and it's moving to the right, that means you're doing positive work. Okay. Uh, the second part, if the force acts in the opposite direction of the object's motion, then the work done is negative. So if you're pushing to the left, but it's moving to the right, then you're doing negative work. And what's a real example of this? Let's say something is rolling down, a heavy ball or boulder is rolling down the hill. So, you know, it's going down, but you're pushing it up the hill, so you're slowing it down. So when you're slowing it down, you're making it lose kinetic energy. And if it's losing energy, that means you're doing negative work. Uh, if the force acts in the perpendicular perpendicular direction of the object motion, then the force uh, does zero work. So, like, if you're pushing up, but it's going to the right, you're not helping it move in any way. You, the way you're, uh, the way the force is going, you're not helping it move. You're not doing any work. Like, for example, and you know, might have been in a situation like this that someone there are three people carrying a really heavy box, and it's going to the right and you're lifting it up or something like that you're not really helping the motion and of it so you're not doing any work and lastly if the object does not move then zero work is done on the object so you know if you're pushing against a really heavy box but it's not moving you might be getting really tired you it might be really hard but if it's not producing any results you're not doing any work okay a little overview of how we define work with uh, in physics. All right, so here's the formula. It's relatively similar. We have work is equal to the force times displacement. But what well, we say the force parallel. And what we say force parallel is the force needs to be going in the same direction as the displacement. Okay, and like we said last time, when it's not going in the same direction, it could be negative or it could be zero. Uh, work is also, remember the transfer of energy, so it's also the change in energy. Okay, I don't, we're not really going to use this formula too much, but this is the main one we're going to use. Okay, and if you want to memorize or copy down the derivative or the ma uh, algebraic manipulation, please do so. And since work is just a change in energy, it is also in joules. Okay, move it on. All right, so let's look at this example. What kind of work is being done in each scenario? So let's look at scenario A. So this object is moving to the right, uh, but it's being pushed up. So since it's a perpendicular angle between them, meaning it makes a 90 degree angle, even though you may be pushing this up, it's not moving up at all. So that means zero work is being oops done for part A. For part B, it's moving to the right, and you're also pushing it to the right. So what that means is you're doing positive work. Part C, it's moving to the right, but you're pushing to the left. So you're doing negative work. Okay. Hope that made sense. We just kind of talked about it. Uh, moving on. A man is lifting a box with constant uh, velocity. What kind of work is being done by the different forces? Okay, so we have a force applied going up and a force of gravity going down and <clears throat> the box is being lifted up so the box is moving up so force applied is doing positive work because you're you're applying it up but it's also going up force of gravity is doing negative work because gravity is kind of slowing it down as you're trying to lift this up it's making it harder it, it's it's not able to go as fast up 
it's losing kinetic energy because gravity is pulling it down. So gravity is doing negative work. All right, it's a good example. Um, but yeah, here, let's look at this. Uh, except example number 22 is their work for the following situations. A teacher applies a force to a wall and becomes exhausted. Uh, and pause the video, try to do it on your own as always, even if you're getting it wrong, much less He's uh, much better for you to be trying to figure things out than just get the answer. Zero work because the wall doesn't move at all. A book falls off the table and falls to the ground. Is there any work? The, the force of gravity does work on the book, making it go down. So force of gravity is pointed down and it's moving down. So force of gravity is doing work. A waiter carries a tray of food above his head with one arm and moves straight across the room at constant speed. Okay. So the food is moving, however, it's moving to the right and you're lifting it up. So zero work is being done, okay? The force and displacement are perpendicular from each other. Part D, a uh, student pushes a box to the right and the box moves to the right. Yes, the word student does work. Okay, uh, example number 13. Okay, first math example for this topic. A student pushes on a crate with 90 newtons of force to the right until the crate has moved 4 meters to the right. How much work did the student uh, do? So force, oh whoops, work is equal to force times the displacement. And they're both going in the same direction, so we could just kind of pretty much just plug it in. 90 times 4, and then we get 360 joules. Okay, so relatively simple. A uh, student pushing on a crate with a certain amount of force to the right until the crate has moved 8 meters to the right. The student does 250 joules of work on the crate. With how much force did the student push on the crate? So again, work is equal to force times displacement. However, this time we need to manipulate this uh, formula to find out what force is. So force is going to be equal to work divided by displacement. Work is 250. Displacement is 8. Let's put that in our calculator. 250 divided by 8, and we get 31.25 newtons. Okay, all right, moving on. A student pushes out a boulder with 50 newtons of force to the right. The student does 400 joules of work on the boulder. How far did the boulder move? Okay, so work is equal to force times displacement, but this time we're trying to find displacement. So displacement is equal to work divided by force. So work being 400, uh, the force being 50, and this should be 8 meters. Okay, moving on. A student pushes on a boulder with 300 newtons of force, but the boulder does not budge. How much work did the student do on the boulder? So work is equal to force times displacement. Uh, force is 300, pushing it hard, but it doesn't move, so zero, so zero joules of work. Okay. Okay, uh, example number 17. Uh, work is being, a box is being pushed to the right and moves 5 meters as shown on the right. What is the work done by the force of life, force of friction, force of gravity, the normal force, what is the total work done on the box? Okay, so force applied is going to be the work done, I'm going to do the work done by the force applied is equal to force applied times the displacement. So this is going to be Force applied is 30, it's right here, and it moves 5 meters, so times 5, and so that's going to be 150 joules, okay? So work done by friction, so work done by friction is going to be equal to the force of friction times the displacement, so the force of friction is 10 newtons, we're going to do 10, uh, we're going to negative 10, Going because it's going in the opposite direction of the way it's moving times 5 is going to be equal to negative 50 joules. Oops. Okay, force of gravity. So the work done by gravity. So the issue here is that uh, it's moving to the right, but force of gravity is going down. So it's perpendicular. So this means the work done by gravity is just at zero. This will be the same case for the normal force. It's moving to the right. 
perpendicular 90 degree angle. So this is also zero, zero, zero. So what is the total work done on the box? A few ways we could do this. We could add each of these 150 plus negative 50 plus zero plus zero, and we get 100 joules. Or we could find the net force and find the work done by the net force. So either one, but I'm just going to do 100 joules right there. Okay, moving on. Uh, this cool video about calories and how work, you get rid of calories and stuff like that. All right, conceptual example number 23. An adult pushes a large crate with a force of 200 newtons and moves it 2 meters. A child pushes a small crate with a force of 40 newtons and moves it at 15 meters. Who does more work? All right, so let's figure that out. So we know again, work is equal to force times displacement as long as they're going in the same direction. The force is 200 times two in the first scenario. So this is gonna be equal to 400 joules. In the second scenario, we have uh, 40 times 15. Now let's see what that equals, 40 times 15. And that equals 600 joules. Okay, so in this in this situation, the child does more work. So even though the child is not as strong, you know, only pushes with 40 compared to 200, since the child moves it a lot further, it does more work, a lot more work in this situation. Okay, a woman climbs up a mountain with an elevation of 1,000 feet, and she reaches the top in one hour. Later, the same woman climbs up a mountain with an elevation of 1,200 feet, and it takes her two hours to reach the top. Which scenario requires the woman to do more work slash burn more calories, uh, burn more energy slash use up more uh, calories? So, um, it's a little bit of an interesting scenario. What's happening is in the first situation, she climbs 1,000 feet. So she gains like potential energy of 1,000 feet times gravity times her mass. Um, in the second scenario, even though it takes a lot longer, she gains more potential energy because she goes higher. So remember, work is just a change in energy. So there's more change in energy, even though she does, uh, it takes her a lot longer. So we have going up 1200 feet. And I guess like an interesting thing to say about a problem like this is like when you're working out, like it doesn't matter how much you're lifting or if, when, if you're running or walking, like it's pretty much like how far you're going or like how it doesn't matter how long you're doing it. It's more like if you run a mile, but you walk two miles, walking two miles will burn more calories than running one mile. Okay. And running a mile and walking a mile burns around the same amount of calories. Okay. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> All right. Example number 18. A woman lifts a 30 newton box up two meters with constant velocity. How much work does the woman do? Okay, so the woman is pulling this up, force applied, and it's going up two meters. So let's do figure this out. Work applied is equal to force applied times the displacement. So this will be 30 times two. So this will be equal to 60 joules. Okay, part B, how much work does gravity do? So gravity is going in the opposite direction, force of gravity over here. So work of gravity is gonna be equal to force of gravity times displacement. So force of gravity, uh, so the box is 30 newtons. So this is gonna be equal to 30 newtons. Oh, and I should know that the force applied is 30 newtons because this is going up with constant velocity meaning this force applied and this force of gravity needs to be the same because it's not accelerating at all. All right, anyway, force of gravity is 30 and displacement is again two. However, we know that force of gravity is going down while it's moving up. So this should be a negative answer. So it's gonna be negative 60 joules. Okay, moving on. Uh, a woman gently puts uh, a, a a woman gently puts down a five kilogram box, a five kilogram box two meters with constant velocity. How much work does the woman do? So a little bit tricky. It's moving down. We know force of gravity is down, and the next thing we should also know is the force applied is going to be up. Yes, 
it is moving down. However, you're not pushing the box down. You're still holding it up as you slowly bring it down. So the force applied is up. So a little tricky here. So work applied is going to be equal to force applied times the displacement. So force applied is going to be, again, it's moving with constant velocity. So that means the force applied and work, force of gravity is going to be the same. So force of gravity is going to be 5 times 10. So this will be 50 newtons. And force applied will also be 50 newtons, 5 times 10. So force applied is going to be 50 times the displacement, which is 2. And it's going to be 100 joules. But remember, force applied is going up while it's moving down. So that means this will be negative 100 joules. Part B, how much work does gravity do? So work of gravity is equal to force of gravity times displacement. But force of gravity is going in the same direction as displacement. So it's going to be 50 times 2. And this will be positive 100 joules. Oh, yeah, well, that needs to be reversed. <laughs> So yeah, this is the answer. The first one, work applied should be uh, negative 100 joules and work gravity should be 100 joules. Okay, moving on. All right, pretty cool uh, video about work. Um, all right, here we go. A woman is lifting up a 50 newton water bucket up with a constant velocity of 1.2 meters per second. It takes the woman five seconds to lift the bucket all the way up. How much work does she do on the bucket? Okay. So she is lifting this up, 50 newtons. Um, so there's a lot of information here, but not a lot of information that's necessary. So we're looking for the work done by the woman. So I'm going to do work done by force applied. It's going to be force applied times displacement. So she lifts it with 50 newtons. So that's 50. And she lifts it up. Oh, we don't know how far she lifts it up. Oh, this is going to be a little bit hard. Okay, but we do know that velocity is equal to displacement divided by time. And we're going to be looking for what this displacement is. So we're going to rearrange this. Uh, displacement is equal to velocity times time. So velocity is 1.2, time is 5, and this gives us 6 meters. So now we can plug that in over here, 6. And then we could see that 300 joules of work is done. Oops, sorry. Okay, hope that makes sense. I might have gone a little bit fast with this, but we have to figure out how far she lifted this up uh, before we could find out what the work is. Anyway, watch it again if that was a little bit too fast. Okay, example 21. Huskies are pulling on a sleigh with a load of materials to bring into town. The Huskies pull on the sleigh with 200 newtons of force, moving with a constant velocity of 5 meters per second for eight, 180 seconds. How much work did the Huskies do? So very similar problem. Maybe I'll go a little slower this time. So we're doing, we're finding the work done by the Huskies. So I'm going to do force applied times the displacement. We know the Huskies pull with 200 newtons of force, but we don't know what this displacement is yet. So we're going to figure that out. So we know they move with 5 meters per second, and they move for a length of time of 180 seconds. So we know velocity is equal to displacement divided by time. And if we manipulate this, we, we know that displacement is equal to velocity times time. So we know the velocity is 5 meters per second. And the time is 180 seconds. So let's figure that out. 5 times 180, 900. So the Huskies move it 900 meters. Now we can plug this in over here. And let's figure that 900 times 200 is equal to 180,000 joules. All right, I hope that all makes sense. Um, so that's work. Next time we're going to be talking about something called power. And when we're talking about power, time does matter. So we're going to talk a little bit about that and the difference between work and power. That will also be our last unit or last subtopic. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.